Okay, Sam, go for it. So, Confederation in 1867 made Canada a country. The country of Canada was under threat from the United States at the time and decided that they needed to expand west to prevent the Amer Americans from annexing Canada. <laughs> Following the rebellion of the Métis, led by Louriel in 1870, Manitoba was named the province. After this, the government wanted to settle things with the aboriginals in the area to the west, um, in Man especially in Manitoba, as well as in the area between Manitoba and British Columbia. If the aboriginals had atta attacked the settlers, it would cost the government money and people would surely be killed. This would be very bad for Johnny McDonald because it would reflect badly upon him and his government and weaken his chances of being re-elected. Okay, so a large part of the Aboriginal lifestyle involved the hunting of buffalo. At this point in North American history, there were many settlers killing the buffalo, which nearly wiped them out. This caused a lot of problems for the Aboriginal people, including them not having enough food to survive. This made the offer from the government to sell the land much more appealing. They could either accept the treaty or have the chance of starving. The first two treaties between the Aboriginals and the newly formed government of Canada were named Treaty 1 and 2 and were also the first post-constitutional treaties. It's okay if it's the wrong slide. So in July 1887, George Simpson invited the First Nations to meet with him at Laurel Fort Gary on July 25th. When the new negotiations started on July 27th, the First Nation were told that the Queen wanted to deal fairly and justly with her subjects. The Queen. Um, in order to avoid future accusations or unjust or unfair agreements, Simpson asked each tribe to pick a chief to represent them as a signer for the, of the treaty. The First people went today deliberate over who should sign the treaty. Uh, they returned to Fort Gary and requested that four individuals jailed for breaching contact with the HBC be released before the talks continued. Once they demand were met, negotiation continued. Hmm. <laughs> the first peoples wanted two-thirds of the land around Red River. Simpson proposed an alternative, 160 acres for each family of five and an annual payment of $12. Who's that? <laughs> um, the treaty was ratified by the Governor General on September 12, 1871. So the second treaty was signed by at Manitoba Post on the 21st of August. Under the same terms and conditions of the first treaty, negotiation went smoothly, and Commissioner Simpson, accompanied by Lieutenant and Governor Archibald, the Honorable James McKay, and um, uh, Clerk of the Assembly, Legislative Assembly, signed on behalf of the Crown along with the seven witnesses. So the seniorities for the Chippewa were uh, Mekis, I'm sorry if I'm running this wrong, and Richard Woodhouse and Susans. Treaty 2 was ratified by the Governor General in Council on November 25th, 1871. Under the treaties, almost all of the promises were fulfilled, except for some of the uh, promises under hunting and agriculture. Um, some of these um, promises included schooling if some of the reserves uh, requested it from the government. It also uh, ensured the land that was given um, as reserves for the First Nations people, as well as a gratuity of $3 a year, as well as an annuity of $3 for every man, woman, and child. Uh, so this meant that not only were the uh, First Nations people given $3 a year, but they were also credited $3 a year. Um, and usually this credit won't, went towards goods, but in some special cases, this, could, this money could also just be directly given to the person who it was directed to. Um, also, one of the promises that was made was that there was going to be a census made of all of the Aboriginal people um, in Rupert's Land and especially Manitoba. Really, these were designed to be able to protect Aboriginals and Aboriginal culture while still providing a basis for assimilation. Mm. 
so the treaties have had huge ramifications in uh, Canadian as well as Manitoba history. Um, un although they were designed to protect Aboriginal people and Aboriginal culture, um, we have also had a tradition of being more assimilatory towards our Aboriginal people, and this uh, still carries through till today. Um, the government is often dragged through court um, on these promises that they laid out in the trees, uh, one and two, as well as through the Manitoba Act um, by the uh, Aboriginal community of Manitoba and other uh, communities throughout Canada. So this is a picture of Capion Barracks, and it's actually been one especially controversial issue. Um, the land that Capion Barracks is technically on was signed under Treaty 1, so it's technically Aboriginal land. And because it was held under the Crown, it was supposed to be given to the Aboriginal people. However, though, because it's in Winnipeg, Manitoba right now, which is a relatively settled area, it was very, very difficult for um, the Canadian government and for the judiciary to decide whether it should go to the Canadian government, the Canadian people, or to the Métis. Um, as uh, mentioned by Maya's group, it, we've also had a lot of issues with reimbursement and those promises not being fulfilled. And we see, even now, um, promises under Treaty 1 and Treaty 2, which weren't carried through, are still getting through our systems today. <laughs>